An important part of automated testing is figuring out what to do when a test fails. Let's take a look at a test that we've set up to fail so that we can see some of the ways that Test Project helps us figure this out. But before we actually run the test, let's look at some of the settings that are available. So if we go to the More menu here and then Settings, we can see some settings that are available on this test. We have a default step time out here that's set to 15 seconds. That's pretty long if we're waiting for or debugging a test. So let's change that to one second. And then we also have this default on failure behavior. In this case, we continue the test, but let's change it so that the test fails at that point. So we can apply those changes and they apply to this entire test. We could change it on an individual test step as well if we wanted to. But in this case, we'll just apply those changes to the entire test. So now let's go back here and let's go ahead and run this test. We'll use our agent and just use the default Chrome browser and go ahead and run the test. Once the test is completed, we can use the more menu here and go to reports to see a report on that test. And we can see our failing test run here. Uh, with the test steps on the right over here. And there's also an option here to show only failed so we can turn that option on which it can be helpful to filter down and find what you're looking for. Now we can notice that the step 7 here on the right is red due to the failure and then all the steps after that are gray. Since we chose the option of failing the test as soon as the test step failed these remaining test steps were all skipped. Now if we click on step 7 we can see some information about the failure. The top part here shows us what the step was trying to do. So in this case, it was checking that this B1 generic web element contains the text Jane Doe. We can also see that it's taken a screenshot at the failing test step. This can be a really helpful way to see what was happening at the point of failure. For now though, let's go try one more thing. Let's go back to the project and then click on the test which opens it up for us and we can edit these test steps manually from here if we want to but let's actually use the test recorder. This loads up the site for us in the test recorder and then if we go down to step 7 here we can click on the more menu and then choose run until here to run our test up until that step. Now we can click on this test step and click on find to find this element on the page. And you can see that this element says John Doe, but we're expecting it to contain the text Jane Doe. Now in this case, we type the text John Doe in the text box, and so our validation here is actually wrong. So let's go ahead and update that. We'll change it to say John Doe and save that. And now that we've corrected that test step, let's make sure the rest of our test is working okay. So we'll go to the next step here and we'll choose the run from here option to run the, through the rest of our test and make sure that everything's working. And if we scroll down, we can see, oh, that's interesting. The last step here is failing. So let's click on that test step and let's try this again. Let's find the element. And Test Project tells us it can't find that element. Now, why would that be? Well, this is actually a bit of a tricky failure to figure out. But thankfully, with Test Project's recorder, we can see exactly what's going on here. So let's go to the step before, and let's run until here. So we're going to run through the entire test up until there. But let's watch closely and pay attention to what's going on. So we're filling out this form, putting an address, email, phone number. And then we click on the Save button which is interesting because this step is called click logout. So if we take a look at this test step, we can see that it has an ID of save. Now, in this case, we've obviously deliberately set this test up to use the wrong ID so that you can see this in action. But this kind of thing can happen where an element is given the wrong ID or a test gets set up in the wrong way. And having this way of visually watching your test run can be really helpful tr when trying to figure out what's going on in situations like this. Test Project doesn't just make it easy to set up and run test automation, it also makes it easy to debug and maintain as well.